International Women's Organization and a proud member of the African People's Socialist Party. I want to thank everyone who came out to this important press conference today. We'll take some questions after all the speakers. Please sign in with our media coordinator, Jamal. The Hands Off Uhuru, Hands Off Africa Defense Committee called this press conference today along with other St. Louis community activists to raise our concerns and questions about the fact that on Saturday, January 7th, this church, the sanctuary here on Redbud Avenue was burned down in a very suspicious two alarm fire. The sanctuary church is directly across the street from the home of Chairman Omali Yeshitela, uh, Chairman of the African People's Socialist Party and leader of the Uhuru Movement. And his wife also, Deputy Chair Ona Zene Yeshitela. On, Je on July 29th, 2022, their home here in the most impoverished neighborhood of St. Louis was brutally raided and pre-dawn coordinated military style attack by the FBI with the complicity of the local police department. This raid involved tens of assault rifle toting agents who sent drones and flashbang grenades into the house, breaking windows and doors. They were handcuffed for hours. They were shown no warrant and they weren't arrested. The armored FBI vehicles in July stood in the street in the same spot where the fire engines were standing during the suspicious blaze on January 7th. Six other properties and homes of the Uhuru movement in two cities were also raided on July 29th, including the Uhuru Solidarity Center at 2654 Gravois Avenue on the south side of St. Louis. One of our buildings that is designed, designated for use by our white solidarity organization, the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. That building stands out because it bears a visible banner that says unity through reparations. Its doors were broken in with high powered battering rams and numerous flash bang grenades thrown inside. Two members of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement were raided in the apartment upstairs and the home of two other member, solidarity members were raided on the south side as well. Three other properties were raided at the exact same military time in St. Petersburg, Florida, including the Uhuru House, which had been a beacon of countless black community struggles since the early 1990s. We denounced the fact that the police department and public safety division of the city of St. Louis were complicit with the FBI providing forces and resources for these raids on a community organization that is doing for our community what the city has never done. The July 29th raids have not caused the Uhuru movement to slow down our work building the Black Power Blueprint. The Uhuru movement has even put a contract on this church here as a space for our expanding programs and growing events. And now this church has been burned down. The, who, the, we recognize that today, excuse me, the burning of this church follows an October 30th illegal arrest of one of our comrades who with the partition, with the participation of the FBI near our community garden, our member was thrown down by police, caused a terrorist, and forced to spend two weeks in jail. We recognize that today is Martin Luther King holiday following the death, following his death in 1968, after years of FBI surveillance and harassment, and slander and disinformation which laid the basis for his assassination that most likely involved the FBI. We also recognize that these attacks on our chairman and other members of the Uhuru movement represent the most serious attack on African liberation movement since the 1960s. Now, as we understand that indictments and arrests are impending, the FBI's threat to imprison Chairman Omali represents a profoundly dangerous assault on the supposed rights 
to freedom of speech, political expression, and assembly for which African people have historically fought and died for in these United States. We are calling on the FBI to immediately cease and desist in their unjust, bogus, and dangerous attack against the Huru movement. We demand that the city of St. Louis immediately refuse to continue to be complicit with the FBI against residents of this city who are doing nothing more than working for the upliftment of the black community, including oh. building programs of political and economic empowerment, while this city has done everything to crush our prosperity and stolen our resources for the benefit of others. We're calling on your support. We call on you to donate to the legal fund. We're raising $151,000 urgently for our legal defense. You can donate at handsoffahoover.org slash donate. We're also calling on volunteers to join this fight, to get involved on the Hands Off Uhuru committee. Go to handsoffahoover.org slash volunteer to sign up and get involved. Hands Off Uhuru! Hands Off Africa! Next, it is my honor to bring up Chairman Amali Yeshiteller, leader of the Uhuru movement and the Worldwide African People's Socialist Party. Uhuru. 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 I want to thank uh, Rage uh, for that uh, introduction. I express my appreciation to those of you uh, in the press who come out and all of the various community organizations and persons who have expressed solidarity uh, with our movement and with opposition to what the FBI has done, uh, particularly on July 29th, but as we shall recount, uh, this has been an ongoing struggle uh, that, expand, that started before July 29th and has continued uh, subsequent to the July 29th attack uh, on the Hood House, on my home, uh, on various other persons uh, who are here. Uh, right now with us, of course, we're really proud to hear and see uh, that there are others who have been characterized as unindicted co-conspirators uh, by the federal government. Uh, that includes Penny Hess and Jesse Neville here. Uh, that in, uh, uh, one of, uh, includes myself. Uh, and we're also really glad to see that they are here with us, uh, representatives from various organizations and personalities. Uh, uh, we see uh, Coffee Wright uh, from the Universal African People's Organization, who uh, is, has, has uh, already expressed solidarity uh, with our movement in opposition to what the FBI, the federal government, has done in attacking our movement, and uh, which is extremely important because she uh, is a candidate uh, for office uh, uh, here in the city. and. It's also ex ex extraordinarily important that uh, Jesse Todd, who is an older person in this city, uh, is also with us uh, uh, with this uh, press conference that we have having today. Uh, Jesse Todd uh, is one of those courageous politicians that have stepped forward, office holders that, that, uh, that have stepped forward uh, to express solidarity in opposition to uh, what the federal government has done to us. Now, I want to make it clear that this press conference is part of uh, our articulation of, uh, of, of, of recognition of what is characterized as Martin Luther King Day, uh, Martin Luther King Weekend by so many people. It's our opportunity to challenge this sanitized history of Martin Luther King and of the movement that produced him and of the era in which he lived and died. Uh, and uh, sanitizing that has contributed to sanitizing the role of the federal government and murdering Martin Luther King and crushing the struggle of black people uh, throughout this country and around the world. I think it's really important that there are members of the media who are here uh, who hopefully uh, will refuse to simply be organs of state power and who uh, will uh, begin to ask the serious questions. It's not like you don't know what the FBI did to Martin Luther King. It's not like that you're ignorant of that. It's been in the media uh, even recently 
kill yourself, king, they said. The J. Edgar Hoover, who was uh, a leader of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, this secret political police, uh, characterized in public that Martin Luther King, the man that this government and all the liberals uh, claim uh, to hold up and love so much, Hoover declared that he was a fraud, the biggest fraud in, the, in this country. Uh, that's what Hoover did. That's the FBI that we are talking about that attacked my house and almost uh, injured uh, my wife uh, and handcuffed us on July 29th in this city. We're talking about uh, an organization that King uh, worked with that was under constant surveillance, constantly being harassed, and we cannot pretend that King was loved before he was murdered. It was his murder that shut him up and that made it possible to sanitize this history and to liquidate the idea that black people were engaged in struggle here and around the world and throughout this country. And that's the thing that King was a part of. He was not just about quote unquote peace. He was about the freedom of black people and other peoples around this world and this country. That's why King died. And this whole notion that some person who escaped from a Missouri prison and found his way uh, to Memphis, uh, Tennessee, and to sit in a toilet that was for public use uh, across the way from where King would come out and know when he was going to walk out on that balcony and kill him and then get away with it for a while, it's extraordinary. Media have to begin to raise questions about that and begin to see that what King stood for during an era, era of church bombings, during an era of fighting for the right to vote, to participate in the electoral process. I participated in that work throughout the South. I was challenged and threatened by mobs of white people for organizing black people to vote in Madison, Florida, and in, in Alachua County, Florida. So this is a movement that I participated in. This is a movement that saw in 1963 a church bomb in Birmingham, Alabama. And I'm telling you there's no distinction in a church being bombed in Birmingham, Alabama in 1963 because black people wanted to vote. And my house being bombed on July 29th because we are organizing black people to participate in the electoral process. No different. And you have to have the ability and the courage uh, to be able to express that. This whole community was shut down. They said that they came because they had a search warrant that required them to use flashbang grenades at my house, that required them to knock down doors and windows and throw flashbang grenades in the rear stairwell of my house, that required them to send drones while I'm handcuffed uh, up the stairs into my house. What in the hell is a search warrant being served uh, by using grenades and knocking down doors? Were they looking for murderers? Were they looking for somebody who they said was engaged in drug pushing or anything like that? No. They accused us of participating in, ele in elections. They accused us of being, of voluntarily uh, calling the United States, the United States to, to, to account uh, because it has violated the United Nations Convention on the crime, Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. Uh, and we say, this is what they accused us of. They accused us of me going to Moscow. They didn't accuse me of going to Spain that I went to also at the invitation of a non-governmental organization that was connected to the Spanish government. They didn't choose me uh, because I went to Ireland during a time where the Irish were under direct British colonial terror they accuse me of this nonsense and it's a racist charge. Yes. And you have to yes. say it's a racist yes. charge. Yes. How yes. in the hell can the Democratic Party that's supposed to be so loving and anti-racist and a Joe Biden that's supposed to be so anti-racist then have the audacity to come out and say that black people don't have enough sense and intelligence to know that we are being oppressed, that somebody who looks like white people have to come and tell us this, that the Russians did it. It's a racist charge, and it, yeah. it, it, yeah. It, it, yeah. it is based on the assumption that it is something that white people in this country will be able to unite with because they are talking about black people and they are talking about that Africa's not having the sense to be able to, to chart our own course, to understand our own oppression. So that's ridiculous. I want to remind people that this, the 
this country was in a, in a serious state of turmoil, the world was at the time, similar to what, now, what is happening now, at the time King was killed. That King was killed, the, the crisis in this country that has, we've seen recently, that's seen white people attacking the Capitol, climbing, climbing uh, the walls to attack the Capitol, defecating on the floors of the Capitol, chasing the vice president, claiming that they wanted to hang him. Right. White people did that. Right. And yes. the, you're talking about a time then uh, where, uh, where the, 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 the 1963, uh, just uh, five years before uh, the murder of Martin Luther King, the United States president was assassinated. And some say by the same forces that killed King. In 1968, uh, 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 1965, yeah. just three, just, uh, 68, just, just a few years, three years after the murder of King, Malcolm X was assassinated in this country. Yeah. And some say by the FBI. Yeah. In 1969, Fred Hampton was murdered by the, with the assistance of the FBI, a member of the Black Panther Party. There's no doubt that the FBI participated in that. 1969, the federal government declared not the Russians, but the Black Panther Party was the greatest threat to the internal security of this country. It was the FBI that created the counterintelligence program that called for neutralizing black people who were trying to lead, provide leadership for African people in this country. That's what we are talking about. So we can't take King, the who loved peace, and King, who was for nonviolence, King was not for peace nor nonviolence. King was for the liberation of black people yes. and everything yes. else yes. was a part Ooh. of the process. Ooh. Ooh. So, so I think it's really important for us to recognize this, that what Martin Luther King was about was for freedom. What Malcolm X was about was for freedom. Yes. What the yes. Black Panther Party was about was for freedom. Yes. They just had different tactics and strategies about how they went Get it, but they all were for freedom, and all of them died for being for freedom. Yes. And in every instance, the FBI was involved in it. Yes. You can't ignore that. And you also cannot ignore the fact uh, that on October 31st, uh, that the FBI and the St. Louis Police Department arrest, kidnapped a member of our movement and called, said because he was engaged in making terrorist threats. What was that about? That was about the fact that he had been hired uh, by the St. Louis educational system, and then they took it back. All of a sudden, they decided they didn't want him working there. And he got involved in a heated discussion with them. And so that was the basis of them of arresting him, taking him to jail, holding him in jail for two weeks. And then, then ter interrogated, not about terrorism, not about terrorist threats, but how many members are in the, in the African People's Socialist Party. What did the people think when we attacked the African People's Socialist Party? This is what they were, they were talking about in that same month of October, after having initiated programs here to uplift this community, after having put in this community a program that created doulas, uh, for African women, where we have a situation that uh, in this city that there are enough black babies dying in the first year of life to fill 14, 14 kindergarten classes. We know the FBI is not trying to help solve that problem. Right. We are trying to help solve that problem. And if what they are saying is that Russians are responsible for that, then three cheers to Russia. Anybody who's working with black people to overturn this oppression. And the media should be saying three cheers to Russia. But I'm telling you, I've been involved in this struggle uh, for, for 60 years or so. I was born involved in I was, I was 81 years old in October of last year. And for at least 60 of those years, I have been actively involved in fighting for the freedom of black people because all my life, black people have been oh. oppressed. And this racist nonsense that the Russians told us that we have to be opposed to, uh, 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 to our oppression and exploitation is a slap in the face of every living and every past and uh, black person in this country and around the world. It's nonsense. Oh, oh, we're going to treat it as nonsense. We've got to fight them. Because part of what they're about is trying to destroy these economic development programs. They want that basketball court that's down on West Florissant uh, and, and, and college. 
They, they want uh, to be able to make it impossible for us to be able to initiate the Women's Health Center. Not that's being created by the city of St. Louis, not that's being created by the federal government that we are putting here. That's the work that we have done and have been doing, and this is something that embarrasses the government that's now talking about being involved in a struggle uh, against autocracy with the United States being this great democracy. How in the hell can you have all this democracy without babies dying the way they are dying in the first year of life in this, right. in this, in this, in this city? Right. So it's a bogus charge. And so we're calling on everybody to be able to unite with us and recognize and live like Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King was not just some pacifist who rolled over. He was hounded by the FBI. He was hounded by the federal government because he worked for black people and the liberation of black people so that we wouldn't have to live on the Team 4 plan right. that they initiated right here in St. Yes. Louis. FBI did investigate the fact that the Team 4 plan called for the deliberate the deprival of African people in St. Louis of any kinds of resources. FBI didn't look into that. FBI didn't look at the disappearance of, of, of Mill Creek Valley, uh, the attack on the, on, the, on, the, on the only black hospital, the first black hospital of significant west of the, of, of, of the Mississippi. FBI didn't look into that. No, they look into all those of us who are trying to solve those problems and to contribute to the ability of black people to have self-determination, to be able to feed, clothe, and house ourselves. That's what they attack. So I think it's extremely important for us to say that we're celebrating Martin Luther King because we're living like him. And they're attacking us because we are living like him. And it's a racist attack. It's a vicious racist attack made by the Democratic Party and Joe Biden in this instance. And I just want to say that now people are talking about how the so-called FBI is being weaponized against people. Uh, but the truth of the matter is that you could have said that a long time ago. Right. That the yeah. FBI has been weaponized against black people of black struggle for a long period of time. And we need to unite with anybody who recognizes the political role that the FBI is playing uh, in this country and around the world. So I want to thank you, uh, everybody. I've spoken a long time, uh, too long. I see media represents eyes beginning to glaze over. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to thank you, Comrade Ray. Go on. Go on. Go on. Thank you so much, Chairman. Up next, I'd like to bring the African People's Education and Defense Bo Fund Board President, Olin Zanaya Hands off, Uhuru. Hands off, Africa. Again, my name is Mona Zanea Shitella, and I'm the board president of the African People's Education and Defense Fund. APDF is the sponsor of the Black Power Blueprint that has been transforming and building economic and political power to develop the north side of St. Louis since 2017. We renovated a 9,000 square foot building on West Florence Avenue to create the Uhura House Community Center with a beautiful event venue that is popular for conferences, birthday parties, and weddings. Across the street from the Uhura House, we built an outdoor venue and the Gary Brooks Black Power Garden, which has completed its third season of planting and harvesting. Our One Africa, One Nation Farmers Market completed its second year at the end of October. We work with white growers and farmers locally and in the region to bring fresh fruits and vegetables to a community under food apartheid. The market also provides opportunities for economic development for community members that build their businesses through vending their products and services. We worked for two and a half years to raise over $150,000 to build a Black Power Vanguard basketball court where our children now have a safe place for recreation that promotes health and uplifts the whole community. We have taken a dilapidated building and renovated it to provide quality housing to community members coming out of the prison system. Under the slogan, Our Labor, Our Future, the African Independence Workforce Program is designed to reverse the negative in economic impact of prisons on the north side of St. Louis. All of you have, all you have to do is walk down West Florida and you will see the mark we have made, including the beautiful murals that we have created to uplift and inspire the entire community. This is not nothing, there's nothing else that we have not done. 
We have a commercial kitchen and bakery under construction, a Black Power Blueprint Square Retail Center coming and more. Just like in the times of Martin Luther King Jr., we have had to overcome nonstop obstacles and even violence. On July 29th of this year, when the FBI raided seven of our movement homes and institutions in a violent pre-dawn 5 a.m. military-style raids, we held strong, and we went ahead with the doula training program set for that day at the Uhura House. We trained 14 African women to become doula. Now we see the violence and destruction of this historic church in our community. Last October, the African People's Education and Defense Fund signed the contract to buy the Sanctuary Church here at 4443 Redbud Avenue in order to transform this space into a larger community center to serve our people. The seller asked us to extend the contract twice, pushing the cl uh, closing date to mid-December, and then suddenly, without any explanation, asked for an additional $50,000. <laughs> then on Sunday morning, January 7th, I looked out my window, which I live right here, and I saw that the church was on fire. It was engulfed in flames. The burning of this church is an assault on this community. Yes. That is in a few yes. short years has worked with APDF to build and invest in our future. We want you to we want you to know who burned this church. Yes. Where is the investigation? Yes. The attacks on this community and the movement must stop now. Yes. We will not be, this will not be a setback. We are con uh, continuing our programs. Our major project for 2023 is building Ahura Wakalia, which is a, our African Women's Health Center on the property we have already acquired. Ahura Wakalia will not only impact the women and families it serves, but it also trains women to be entrepreneurs. Economic empowerment is the foundation of a healthy life. APDF mission and mantra is to defend the human and civil rights of the African community. And we believe that African people have the right to self-determination. Right. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Thank you so much, Deputy Chair. Uh -huh. Up next, I'd like to bring Penny Hess, Chair of the African People's Solidarity Committee. My name is Penny Hess, Chair of the African People's Solidarity Committee, the organization of white people that works in the white community under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhuru Movement. Our assignment is to go into the white community to build genuine solidarity from white people with the right of African people to struggle to be free and for reparations to African people which is 100% of what we do. And I and before I start, I, I have to salute Chairman O'Malley and Chatella, who has courageously fought for the liberation of African people, as he said, for 60 years. For 60 years. And will yes. never stop until independence and freedom is won. And I salute the Deputy Chair, Ona Zinea Shetela, who leads our day-to-day -day work in the fight for reparations. And I want to call on the white community from St. Louis and anywhere else you are that you can hear this. We cannot stand by why this, while this vicious attack on an African organization fighting for, as has been said, nothing more than the genuine upliftment politically and economically of the African community, something that this city not only has never done, it has done the opposite. It has, it has stolen the resources of African people and prevented the accumulation of African resources uh, repeatedly over and over again in, in this history. And I denounce in the strongest terms the terrible and violent ordeal Chairman O'Malley and, and Deputy Chair Ona Zene were subject to, subjected to on 
July 29th by the FBI with the complicity of this city. This city. It wasn't that the FBI just came in and sneaked its way. It had the complicity of the city, the city government and the city police department. And we should be outraged at that. Um, and that the city you know, providing this African community with programs of upliftment that this city has never provided. On July 29th, my home that I share on the south side of St. Louis in a white community, along with Conrad Kitty Riley, was also raided at 5 a.m. They broke down our door and they held us at gunpoint for hours while they went through everything in the house, taking files, date books, and all electronics, computers, and phones that were in the house. And because our work in the African People's Solidarity Committee is about winning reparations to African people, we are able to use the building at 2654 Graboy near Jefferson on the south side. An amazing building that has a um, that has a banner that says you make it through reparations. And thousands of people pass by pass by uh, pass by that that building every single day. That building was raided. They came first upstairs to the apartment where where comrades are living, brought them down in handcuffs and at gunpoint and then broke down the door into the Solidarity Center with a high-powered uh, battering ram and spent hours going through and, <laughs> and throwing flashbang grenades into, into the building over and over again. Um, and that, that the Uhuru Solidarity Center, I do want to say this, is at a kind of nexus where about four neighborhoods come together, Fox Park, Benton Park, Benton Park West, Tower Grove South. And we and comrades from the Solidarity Movement have walked through every single one of those neighborhoods. We have left flyers, we have talked to people, we have tabled, and we have outpouring of support from that neighborhood. I want to be really clear and, and salute the white community there who have given us so many, who have donated, who have come out, who have let us know in so many ways that they denounced this brutal attack on the Uhuru movement and Chairman O'Malley Chatella and Deputy Chair. And we denounce these attacks that are clearly a continuation of COINTELPRO from the 1960s. We call on St. Louis to stop these ongoing assaults yes. on the Uhuru movement, including the burning of this church yes. that was needed for the expansion of the programs that the Uhuru movement is creating. And we call on white people to go to handsoffuhuru.org, donate now, instead of, instead of raising the resources for other things, we're in, you know, we have to raise um, although we're going to keep doing the other thing, but we have to raise resources, a lot of resources for the defense of, of this, to take this on, because nobody is going to put a finger on Chairman O'Malley. That's, right. That's, That's right. right! That's right! So we go to, yeah, go to, go to handsoffuhuru.org, donate, sign up, but also sign up for the Uhuru Solidarity Movement National Convention on March 11th. You can go to gurusolidarity.org. Unity through reparations! Thank you so much, Chairwoman Penny. Up next, I'd like to introduce Alderman Jesse Todd of 18th Ward. Right here. And I am from the 18th Ward. I'm from St. Louis, right over there. I walked over here in the rain. My car wasn't working right. So I am the alderman. I want you to put it down. I'm not I'm not hiding any place. I'm not like a lot of these politicians. You only right. see them on election time during election time. And if they don't have opposition, then you won't see them then. So you're gonna see me all the time. Okay, so you who wrote uh, I'm with it. Let me make this crystal clear too. 
I'm a lifetime member, and put this in your paper, Jesse Todd, 81 Alderman, is a lifetime member of the uh, International Democratic People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. Uh, so I am a member, so uh, I'm not going to be a, I swore and took the Constitution as an alderman, so I'm no part of any law breaking organization. Let me make that crystal clear. I follow the Constitution. The Constitution says that we have a right to associate with anybody we want to. After we gave 300 years of four, not gave, it took 300 years of our ancestors' labor. Yes. It is estimated that they were, that white people, not they, white people know us because they enjoyed the fruits of the labor. That's right, that's right. Over $14 trillion, dollars, not including pain and suffering. Yes. So if it, there's no ethnic group in this country that has given more than black people. And you tell me one group that has cleared the land from the from the Pacific Ocean, from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific. Right. There's nobody else. Right. Nobody. Right. Every, and uh, so I'm, a, I'm not going to give a history lesson. I'm going to go ahead and speak. But I could. I'm a history teacher. That's what I did for a living all my life. But I'm going to stay away from that. I'm going to stay focused on being a, uh, a member of the Yehuru movement. And, they, and in, let me make this crystal clear. Everything that everybody said before me, I agree. <laughs> so put that in the paper, so everything is not one word that was said, so I'm not going to repeat those words because I agree with them. <laughs> so let me quickly say this. Uh, I, I, uh, I was in the movement starting at 11 years old, I mean 12, when we closed down Fairground Park right over there, wouldn't even allow us to swim. But guess what? I, we broke in and started swimming anyway. Yeah. They told us. We, and so what they did was concrete the big Olympics pool was black. Well, we forced them to let us get in there and build a pool about a fourth that size and concrete the big Olympic pool that the white people used to live in before integration yeah. started. Uh, but anyway, let me get to Since I've been in the civil rights and the uh, black power struggle, and any other kind of right, I've been a president of the block unit. You put that down, neighborhood associate, everything I could do to help the black folks, I've done it. And including being a member of all these black organizations, civil rights organizations, black power organizations, and any other organization, including the, uh, my lifetime membership with the Yuhuru movement. So let me say this. Churches have been burned, more than a hundred churches in the South were burned and other facilities, the same as this one, I don't know who burned it, but the same as this one was burned because, because it was making a positive contribution to black people. That's all it was doing, because what they want us to do, they don't want us to have facilities to meet in. They don't want us to get together. The same old thing about when doing slavery, just an upgrade. Right. Uh, uh, but anyway, so I, we've had experience with burning buildings. Uh, this is a Christian institution, and I'm a Christian. Right. I'm a Christian, so I'm a Christian, and I've been a Christian. Uh, I go to church, I pay tithes, and I don't want anybody to tell me, well, there ain't no Christian, just yes, uh, so, But Christ, Christ certainly said, take care of the poor. And they said, and they, they're trying to work with Christians. I'm not going to say it. everybody is a Christian. Because <laughs> I don't want to speak. But this is what Chris is supposed to be doing. Yes. Yes. Chris is supposed to be, God, God, uh, Jesus said, what, he said, love him with all your heart, your soul, and everything you got. But then he said, what you do for the least of these, yes. you yes. do for him. Yes. Now, this is what the, all of these programs that were named, and I don't need to rename, go back through it. These are the least of these. Mm -hmm. And so it said, love your neighbor as you do yourself. Look. They're loving neighbors. All kinds of love. They made all this program. What is the city doing with all our money? Hiring some more police right. to do what? Lock us up and make jobs for folks out there in the rural areas. Break up families yeah. right. and do other things instead of spending our money on programs like this. But they attack, attack 
The, the same police, FBI, full of people, full of, street full of people. Those could, that could have been money, tax, wasting taxpayers' money. I'm a steward of taxpayers' money, I'm an alderman, and that's a waste of taxpayers' money. And they go around scaring people. Say, we are not, in, a, in uh, the seven, they empowered the, out of the youth worker in a program, and they locked me in there. We, thousands of us, we were youth. We went down to City Hall, took over City Hall, they had to haul me out. Haul, haul me out. I was on payroll. They didn't find me because we were, it was so popular that they couldn't find me. But the point is, they took our program, we were paying young people minimum wage and running program, they were under supervision, took all the money, all our tax money out. It's not like some kind of money falling out of the sky. We pay taxes too. Black folk pay taxes. And we get absolutely no, very low some crumbs for it and get some more policemen than in the FBI who had the street full of people blocking off the chairman and the deputy chairman's house, raiding, the, raiding the, our supporters' offices, tearing down doors when we could have been using that money for something that there was a waste. Yes. Of tax per money, yes, yes. and then it's, and then half of the budget goes to so-called public safety. Are we any safer now than we were 50 years ago? Absolutely not. 30, 40, 30, 20, 10. We are no safer. But guess what? There used to be two prisons for adults: Al Gore, men adults; Al Gore, and one for women, Chillicothe. There was Al Gore in Jefferson City for older men. Now we got 17 prisons. Get in our, so an increase of 14. We they built 14 prisons since the 70s. 14, in addition to those, so we have 17 prisons now, and we are no safer. Those are public works programs for rural whites. Yeah. That's what they are just, and, it, and all they are is the slave ships on land. Right. And, if you think, and I'm not exaggerating because the 13th Amendment says right. that prisoners are slaves. Right. And they right. talk about democracy and they still have slavery in America. Right. And if you, I didn't write the Constitution, I'm old, but I didn't write it. <laughs> that's, that's what my students used to say. Well, did I know Abraham Lincoln and George Washington? <laughs> I said, no. But, but anyway, I didn't write the Read the 13th Amendment to the Constitution so we still have slavery. You can't have democracy and slavery at the same time because that's a contradiction. Right. Yes, uh, okay, so I'm going in with this. I'm going to summarize. The point is that we've had fires for years when black folks we're trying to have a pl meeting places and facilities to serve ourselves. Also, uh, we, we could have uh, we could have been having service in it. We, we could have even thought about. I know the Yoruba people yeah. so kind. All of them may not be religious. We have, but they, so, they, they could have even had some service that somebody sure. wanted to use it. But they don't want to. They don't want to hear about the real teaching of Christ. Cause Christ taught some good stuff. But they, <laughs> I, most of the preachers don't preach about that. But I tell you, I read the Bible, Bible so I know what's in it. But they just only they kind of some of most of them just kind of skip over the, the, the good stuff and just tell you what they want you to hear and collect your money. <laughs> but uh, we could have had many, many actors were playing and go ahead, not could have, we're going to have those activities anyway, they're not going to stop us. That's right. uh, uh -huh. So we're going to have those activities and we're going to have, have it for meeting place, we're going to have our youth active and we're going to continue on. This will not stop us. We will, we will find, we, this will not stop us. We're going to continue on with the same program. Go wherever there's a will. There's the way. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 That's the people of all of y'all. Yes. yes. Uh, last but certainly not least, Carla Coffee, right? She is also running for office Ooh, right here in this ward. These are the only two politicians that are actually out here standing with the people. Thank you right. so much, Coffee. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hello, um. 11 Ward, New 11 Ward family, that's what this is. Okay. I attended grade school, graduated from Ashland Grade School in the 11 Ward. I attended high school, Beaumont, in the 11 Ward. My first apartment 
in the 11th ward, right on Pope. My child was conceived in the 11th ward. I've owned my home right around the corner for over 20 years in the 11th ward. The church that I attend in the 11th ward. I have a business right across from Fairgrounds Park in the 11th ward. So I feel that I can represent the 11th ward. Well. Now, the death threats that I get, all the insults that I get, the attacks that I get, it didn't come from the Yohoro House. It didn't come from the African Socialist People's Party. Yes. I have seen nothing but progress since they came to the 11th Ward. Right. The 11th Ward can appreciate, we all appreciate. This. Most people that grew up in this ward, a lot of them are gone. A lot of them deserted this place. It looks like a ghost town. Yes. But these people, my comrades, yes. I am a part of a coalition, the Black is Back Coalition. As a member of Universal African People Organization, we are partners. And I support them because I don't, California, Florida, wherever, whatever other places, whatever they have, St. Louis didn't have. The North Side didn't have. So this basketball court, when I see African people on Saturdays have the opportunity to buy, sell, and trade from one another, that is progress, family. Because yes. we grew up over here. Everything was black-owned. Yes. Our corner stores, yes. our shoe stores, yes. our, our grocery stores, our laundry net, our cleaners, everything was black-owned except for the major grocery store. And we don't have that anymore. And so I think we should welcome, I welcome the African Socialist People Party. And I love going to the Yohoro House because it's inspiring. I support that. I support it 200%. Just the same as I support the white people when they come to our community with the tiny houses for the veterans. And I don't see anybody kicking their doors in. I don't see anybody saying no to that. So when we have people standing up, making life better, how could we dare not support them? Right. How could we dare step outside of our house and see this ghost town that they call St. Louis with all the money that we pay in taxes, all the money that this city has, but they didn't pay for this, these improvements. They didn't pay for this. No. The African Social Party raised these funds to make life better for us. And I challenge everyone, black, white, whatever race you want to claim, to stand with them, to stand with us. Yes. Because they are doing the right thing, family. Yes. And if you want to be on the right side of history, yeah. you better wake the hell up. Yes. Because we all matter, okay? Yes. So thank you for allowing me to join you all. And we're going to continue to move forward. Ask that you support the Aurora House, that you stand with the African People's Social Party. Stand with them. And whether I win the election or not, I will continue to stand with anybody that's making progress. And we see who's making the progress over here. It is obvious. Yes. The African People's Socialist Party. The Yohoro House. Yes. I'm copy right, and that's right I said. <laughs> Fight back! Mr. Fight back! Mr. Fight back! Fight back. Fight back. Uh -huh. At this time, we can take any questions. If there are any questions, go yeah. ahead. Um, I guess this would be a question for the chairman. Yes. Um, but just so I'm clear, do you feel like the fire in this church was a direct attack yes. on the African People's Socialist yes. Party? Yes. Or you? I think on, the, okay. on our part in this community, because I think an objective uh, of the government of, uh, uh, you know, even preceding King, and certainly subsequent to King, uh, was to prevent black people from having any kind of self-determination. St. Louis is a very interesting city. Uh, it's a majority African city that pretends it's not, uh, and that is working, that is working to change that. Uh, and it's a, uh, where they, they've removed, destroyed any capacity in our community uh, for self-reliance. So as, as Coffee just said, 
You don't see uh, any of our uh, black-owned businesses and things like that. And uh, what we have begun to do is take that on and change that. And I think that uh, in St. Louis, what you see is that uh, this real convenient kind of stuff, they'll, they'll sit on the corner someplace and have, pass out fruit and pass out some vegetables, sit it out on the ground near church. Uh, they'll give that kind of stuff. But at the moment, black people begin to move to be self-determination, so they're determined so we can feed, clothe, and house ourselves. That's the problem. And we've done all of these incredible things up and down, uh, especially West Florissant, but we're also on, on Natural Bridge, Bridge and Goodfellow, where we've got a huge building there uh, with a program that's, that's being constructed even as we have this discussion. Now this church, this, this magnificent institution that, that we were bringing all kinds of programs to, uh, and they burn it down. And I'm saying that the objective is to make sure that African people uh, stand in a constant state of dependency, yes. that we cannot feed, clothe, and house ourselves, and so that we have to rely on the good white man, or the government, or something like that. The thing that white people say they hate, welfare and stuff like that, they want to make sure we cannot survive without what they call welfare, when they've been living off the welfare yeah. of black people right. for something yeah. like four or yes. five hundred years. Yes. Right. So, so, yeah, I'm there, there's a direct relationship, there's no doubt. I mentioned the church on, on, on July 2nd, 27 days before they attacked us here, and they attacked our Uhura house in St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, somebody with a military grade flamethrower oh, uh, in broad daylight uh, torched the, the, the red, black, and green flag there on a 50 foot flagpole, a uh, 15 by 25 foot flag. They burned that down. Uh, and then, of course, the 29th, we know what happened here, the 30th, first. Uh, how they kidnapped uh, Comrade Timber on so-called terrorist charges, and then the terrorist charges disappeared. What they really want to know, they say, is how many members of the, in, in the African People's Socialist Party? What about Russia? You went to Russia also. What do you, can you tell us about Russia? These are the kinds of questions that were being raised with him. Yes, yeah, an attack on, the, on black people. And this is something that has to be real clear. King was killed not because he was just a good-looking black man that made eloquent speeches. Mm. King was killed because of what he represented for black people, just like Malcolm X, just like uh, 30 members of the Black Panther Party in, 19, uh, uh, in 1968 alone. Uh, just like 1969, uh, we had a situation where the black, uh, 21 members of the Black Panther Party in New York 21 were put on trial for conspiracy. Same thing they're charging us with. And I want to remind everybody that King had to be in motion because for, for since our inception, since we were brought to this country, being free has been illegal. That's why they were putting King in jail, because he was committing illegal acts to try to register black people to vote. That's why they put me in jail since the 1960s for illegal acts of trying to win freedom. That's why they put even Nat Turner on trial. For that. That's why they even FBI charged W.E.B. Du Bois in 1951 for the same thing they just charged us with. So being free, uh, fighting for freedom, trying to be free for black people has always been illegal. Right. And they, this whole thing about free speech, yeah, you got the right to, the, for free speech as long as you say what they want you to say. Right. Uh, yeah. But the moment you begin to speak to our own issues and questions, right. and if you do that, you, then you have to criticize the way the United States government treats black people. Yeah. Right. And, and this is the real problem that they have. Yes, we make that criticism. America was a criminal act against the indigenous people, the founding of America, a criminal act against the indigenous people here, and the building of the wealth of this country was a criminal act committed against the indigenous people on their land and with stolen black labor. Right. That has not yeah. changed. Yeah. That's the reality, and they don't want to have that story told. That's why they killed King. King wasn't killed in a gunfight. Malcolm X wasn't killed in a gunfight. It was what they said. Marcus Garvey, well, the FBI cut his teeth uh, harassing Marcus Garvey. When they came to my house with armored vehicles right across the street from here, uh, when they went the same place that you see uh, the fire department that was here uh, uh, when this fire happened, the armored vehicles were here with with the rifle toting, camouflage wearing, flat jacket, uh, flat attire of, of military forces called the FBI who used who used assault weapons mounted 
with the laser targeting devices that they had bouncing off my chest to tell me that they would kill me too. This is the reality that black people have been confronted with, the struggle we involved in, the struggle King was involved in, and the fight for freedom of black people continues. And as long as if they can browbeat us and push us down and terrorize our communities, why did they have to have five o'clock in the morning? Flashbang grenades going off every that wasn't just for us. That was for the black people in this community right. as well. That right. was for everybody to know this is what happens if you get out of line. Right. So anyway, yeah, that's they burned this church. Okay. They burned this church, they burned our flag, they kidnapped this brother here. Uh, 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 yeah, they burned this church. <laughs> so what, uh, what were you hoping to do with this church, and um, are you still going to try to buy it? No, no, it's no use to us now. They made sure. And it's really interesting because I read in the newspaper uh, that the fire department said that uh, they don't know what started it. Uh, although uh, somebody uh, was told by a member of the fire department that some kind of a settlement was used there. Mm -hmm. uh, but they said they don't know what started it, and it's too dangerous to go in there and investigate. Mm -hmm. But all I know is that so-called public safety of St. Of, of Louis worked with them. That was the police department. They were there, out here, when they came. They helped to shut down the community. And the fire department is part of the public safety uh, entity of the city of St. Louis. So I'm saying they work hand in glove. And that all of them work with the FBI who notified uh, them that they were coming and to attack us and told some of the black uh, so-called leaders that they were going to do it as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is what uh, they, 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 they torched that church. They torched that church. And we're going to fight. We're going to win this one. We've got to be free. I mean, we can't just live under these miserable and humiliating conditions. Right. And this whole racist assumption. I mean, everybody should rebel against this whole notion that black people cannot on our own recognize that we are oppressed and have to be right. free. That somehow it takes a Russian. Right. It takes a white man. It takes a white people to tell us that we are oppressed. Right. That's the most. And this is coming from the liberal uh, uh, Joe Biden and the liberal of uh, we love black people Democratic Party. Right. That's who's pushing that line mm -hmm. right now. And so uh, you talk about weaponization of the FBI mm -hmm. that's now being talked about. People talk about the deep state. Well, we know about the state. The FBI is an instrument of the state. That's state power. Uh, people talk about the, 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 how the weaponization. That, when they killed Malcolm, that was weaponization. When they killed Martin Luther King, that was weaponization of the FBI. When they tailed me and harassed me from the 1960s up to now, that's weaponization. And we could have told them that before. They didn't have to wait till now. And some of them already knew it because some of them participated in it. Right. Like Joe Biden, right. who charges me with, with fighting uh, for voting rights, who in the 1970s himself, himself as a senator, uh, was responsible for working against uh, civil rights of black people in this country, who as a senator worked against busing, worked against integration. I'm saying that part of Biden, what Biden is doing right now is carrying out his own ideology, his own philosophy to keep black people from being free. Right. So that's what we're looking at. We're going to be free. Yeah. And the, the objective, yes. the, what has to happen, the world is changing under, under, under everybody's feet. You can't hold on to no old timey uh, backwards ways and attitudes and think that everybody's going to go along with it. doesn't work anymore. We've got a whole generation of young black people who are trying to emerge now and to engage in this struggle for freedom. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Hooray. Oh. Hooray. 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 Any other questions? That concludes our press conference. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for coming out. Hands up for Hooray!